Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my home and studio at Wendy Acre Cottage. It's a hundred year old craftsman cottage where I love to paint and garden and entertain and care for all my wonderful fur babies, both those that are adopted and all the little fosters. It's also my home base for many fun adventures of the art, history, and gardening kind. So here I am at my tea station this morning and I just added to the kettle some filtered water and we will get that going. And then I have uh, some gum Arabic powder and in the future I'm probably going to get the Schminka gum Arabic solution that's already prepared so I don't have to go through this part. So we have to use um, twice as much water as we do the gum arabic so i'm going to i think just start with one of these little um scoops and that's something i already had here at home i wonder if that's gonna be enough let's just go ahead and do two just to um make sure we've got enough okay so there's two so in this particular preparation, it's going to be um, one part gum arabic to two parts water. So now that we've got two of these scoops, I'm going to need four of these scoops to go into my solution. And then um, one of these scoops of the glycerin. And I bet I can't get this open with one hand. Okay, we will come right back to that. All right, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this with one hand, but um, I'll just kind of let you see that the kettle is now boiling. I'm going to add four scoops of water using the small scoop here to our jar, and then one um, scoop of the glycerin to our jar. So in order to rough up the smooth glass surface, I'm using, what is that called? Silicon carbide etching powder. And you uh, mix this with a little water to make a slurry, and then you basically etch or scratch the glass.
in order to make the paint we're going to put out one part pigment on our mulling surface and one part of the gum arabic solution now one thing i failed to mention is that i also added a drop or two of honey to that gum arabic solution i think it does the same thing as the glycerin so i'm not sure you actually need both this is the first time i've made my own watercolor paint so it's kind of an experiment but um i have painted with it and i love it so far so that's probably what i'm going to continue to do until i decide to experiment with something else so um this one-to-one -one ratio is not a perfect science um, you want to uh, slowly add that gum arabic solution and work it into your pigment and just come up with that consistency that you want to work with you don't want to get it too loose um, because then it will never dry in your little half pans and um, you don't want it too too you know uh, gloppy either you want it to be a nice smooth paste now my plan is to even make my own pigment but uh it's uh end of march and not a lot is blooming at the moment um i do have some daffodils outside and i do have some plum blossoms um, plum blossoms are white, so I'm not sure what kind of pigment they would produce. Uh, the daffodils are a beautiful yellow, and I'm, I'm not even sure what color they'll produce. Um, I may go grab a handful of them, which is really hard to do to destroy perfectly beautiful, healthy growing daffodils. But I really want to create my own pigment in addition to making my own paint. And I don't know if you're familiar with making indigo. Um, indigo is a beautiful blue pigment as well. Um, but when you're creating the blue pigment, um, it looks lime green in the vat. And you'll put in your cloth and pull out a, a blue dyed cloth out of this green pigment. So I'm not even sure of the science behind all of this. It's just a whole new um, area of study for me but one that I absolutely love and another way to be creative. And quite frankly, it's a it's kind of a Zen um, experiment, uh, very meditative in a way. Um, for those of you who know me personally, um, I've had a lot of extra responsibility uh, come my way in the last um, year or so. And I've also increased my um, teaching gigs and uh, just feeling a little overwhelmed and a little stressed and also really wanting to do some creative activities just for me and usually when I'm looking for inspiration and needing to um, see something new I get full of wanderlust and I was supposed to go to the plain air um, Forgotten Coast Plain Air Invitational this week and was not able to go um, at the last minute. So I just decided to take some time out and to pull out my supplies and just get started on this process. And there will be more Forgotten Coast Plain Air Invitationals in my future. However, my parents need me at the moment and um, I will not have them forever. So we are enjoying their company and then also spending time making these delicious paints. Now this color I think looks very, very much um, once you, you know, use the water to water it down and then it dries lighter, looks very, very much like my hydrangea. So I'm naming it after my cottage hydrangea. Now once it's finished, there are some um, little petals in the hydrangea that are more pinkish purple than just bluish purple so I'm, I think I'm going to remix this with a little red in it and just come up with a completely new color to complement this color but that is not even in the first three colors I plan to make so the first three colors I plan to make are the cottage blue hydrangea and then I have the red tin roof red because my little cottage has a red tin roof. 
And then I also have a vintage mailbox. It's actually on the back of the property. I use it with my uh, studio apartment. And um, I'm going to come up with that color. It's more of a, a royal blue type color. It looks more like this color, actually, um, as it looks now. This color won't look the same once it's completed and, and dried. But anyway, uh, enjoy this process of it. Is it called ASMR when you watch something just to kind of zone out? Um, you have to mold this for a good, you know, 20, 30 minutes. So it, it takes a while. And there it is, a big, bold, beautiful puddle of blue paint. I have these little half pans that I plan to store them in. And getting the paint in there is not the easiest. I have a little um, medicine dropper that I thought I would use, but I have found that it's just easier to scrape it up with a palette knife. In fact, uh, next time I do this, I think I'm going to use a um, old uh, 
kitchen spatula because I feel like that's going to scrape it off of the surface, the mulling surface, a lot easier. Um, the palette knife was recommended, but um, and it's and it is helpful, but I think for um, being able to scoop it all into a big puddle and be able to pick it up, I want to scoop. I mean, I want to scrape with the uh, with the um, spatula and then scoop it with the palette knife. And I don't have any kind of scales or weighing mechanism to know how much paint is going in there. So I'm counting the drops of paint and it appears that a half pan, your regular sized half pan will hold 24 to 25 drops of paint. And that should last a decade, depending on how much you paint. I've had my travel watercolor set, my first travel watercolor set, I've had I think since 2015. And I'm beginning to run low on one of the colors. Now what I'm doing here is I've decided to add three or four dots to a business card to be a sample size. And I don't know how big to describe it. It's it's not as big as a dime. And again, I don't know how to, to measure the weight with it being so small. But it's three or four dots. Some of them are five dots. But um, it's actually a lot of paint. And these will dry. And then when I go to paint with them, I just have to use a wet paintbrush to reconstitute the top of the, the little paint puddle there and um, get the paint off of it. And this is highly pigmented paint, very highly pigmented paint. It's also non-toxic, but I wonder if I do this very much if I need to wear some gloves just to be on the safe side or possibly a mask. And Lord knows we got lots of masks, so um, you don't want to breathe in the pigment. And then on these business cards, I plan to have um, three different samples of the Cottage Blue Hydrangea, the Red Tin Roof, and the Vintage Blue Mailbox. And clearly I'm going to have to make two more colors of paint to complete these um, three sample sets, but I just thought it would be fun to have a little collection as well. And there you have it. You've just witnessed my first journey into the world of making pigments. Next time I hope to harvest my own crop here at Windy Acre Cottage and make some organic ones, but we'll see. So now it's time to try out these new colors, see how I like them. And... I think we ought to paint. I 
hydrangea, of course. Get that reconstituted. See how this might work out. I don't know if you've got hydrangeas at your house, but they look like big balls until you get closer to them and then realize that they're, they consist of a lot of little petals, um, little blossoms that create that sphere. Make it a little darker down here at the bottom because light can't get down here. I even tuck a little color in between those. Kind of nondescript. Let's make it all connect. Lovely. Oh, I love that. And we'll make it a little a little darker down here. Okay. Got another watercolor set here. We'll reconstitute some green. It's a little too crazy, so I'll add a little brown to it. If I can't make it a little more neutral. Oop, I went too far.
might even add a little red to our blue. Sometimes those petals are a little purpler than you think they're going to be. Oh, love that. Love that. Love that. Oh, that is so much fun. So much fun. And there you have it, my little cottage blue hydrangea.